Hey everyone, I'm back again today with another new editing video for you guys. Uh, today I'm going to show off a piece of software from a company called Skylum called Luminar 4. This has become really popular recently with photographers. Um, it can be used as a Lightroom replacement. It does have uh, library functionality for uh, cataloging and going through your photos, uh, but it also has editing capabilities like Lightroom. So today I just wanted to show you guys uh, a couple quick things with this piece of software and uh, we'll edit this photo that I have here from the Flower and Garden Festival. So one of the cool things about Luminar is they have what's called Luminar Looks which are basically these one-click enhancements to your photos uh, so you can just click on a particular look and then change the amount or percentage that you want it applied to your photo and it's a quick and easy way for you to get uh, a good look out of your photos. Uh, let's just reset this one and we'll just take a look at a few more. That was one of the essentials but they have uh, quite a few uh, different ones and you can just go through these various uh, looks. Obviously some will be better uh, for certain photos, uh, for instance, you get a portrait section. It's not really what this is, so it wouldn't be very useful. Um, but you can go through all of these and kind of test them out, see how they look on your photos. And if that's all you're looking for is just quick and easy, this is definitely uh, a nice feature that will allow you to just quickly get a nice edit out of your photos. Now, if you're looking for uh, a little bit more, a little bit more control, uh, it does allow you to edit with uh, these different filters uh, your photo. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to show you how I would edit this photo with some of the built-in filters uh, that Luminar has. So I'm going to go into the essentials here on the right and the first thing I'm going to click on is light and you'll see that we have uh, our white balance, exposure, contrast, highlights, and shadows. This is a very dark image so I am going to start by pulling the shadows up quite a bit and then I'm going to ever so slightly increase my exposure. I'm going to pull my highlights back paying attention to the highlights that are strong uh, right here on Belle's dress and here on the front of Beast. Uh, unlike in Lightroom where uh, when you pull these to extremes you can really blow out the highlights or you can you know if you pull them too far back they turn gray uh, this is a much more subtle adjustment so you can be a little bit stronger uh, or more heavy-handed with the sliders uh, so I'm just pulling this back to kind of flatten my highlights a little bit here on Bell and Beast and I am happy with what I've got out of this of course uh, you can also take a look at the white balance if you feel like it needs to be a little cooler a little warmer I'm gonna warm mine up ever so slightly uh, 3202 looks pretty good um, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add uh, another filter. I'm going to come into AI Enhance and I'm just going to add this AI accent uh, ever so slightly. It gives it just a little bit of pop. Uh, you don't want to do too much. Obviously you can come all the way over here it's to an extreme. It's, uh, it's too much. So I'm just going to bring it uh, to about 16 and I think that's pretty good for me. Uh, you've also got uh, some cool filters here you can take a look at such as color where you can increase the saturation and vibrance. Uh, I typically will stay away from saturation but I will give it a little bit of vibrance. Uh, it's more subtle of an increase in color which I prefer. Uh, if you want to do a black and white conversion you can do that here which is nice. You can do uh, detail enhance which is basically uh, like adding tonal contrast. I'm going to avoid that. If you have a really noisy image, you could use this here where you can quickly denoise the image, which is really nice. And of course, it has masking. So you can do uh, a brush in mask where you would uh, just paint what you want uh, to be denoised. Or you can use luminosity mask, which is a really great way to fine tune your mask in order to target a specific uh, region of your images. We're not going to touch too much on that in this video, but in a future video, we're going to come back and take a look at that. Uh, the other one that you might like is the vignette. Uh, I do like the vignette uh, 
choice just because you can give a little bit of focus to the image. So sometimes I will just bring back just a little bit of the vignette, uh, minus 15, and it just kind of darkens the edges a little bit, which is quite nice. Uh, then you've got some other panels that you can go into. Uh, creative is some more uh, artsy effects that you can add. I'm not going to add any of those, but feel free to play around with any of those if you feel like they may be good for your image. Then you have a portrait section. This is really great for portraits. You can do skin clean up here. Um, it has some enhancements for portraits. And then it has um, the Orton effect, which I actually really like to use on my landscape images. Uh, but we'll leave that also for another video. Uh, finally, we'll come into the Pro uh, panel and we'll take a look at Advanced Contrast. This is my absolute favorite filter that Luminar has. I actually use this uh, from within Photoshop as a plugin uh, to do some uh, adjustments to my images from time to time. So let's go ahead and we will add some contrast to our midtones and then we will just balance that out with the balance slider here. If you move it to the left, you can see that the midtones seem to get a little bit brighter. If you move it to the right, uh, it's a little bit flatter of an adjustment. So I'm going to move it over like this. I'm going to add a little bit of contrast to my highlights. Again, you can just move the balance slider back and forth until you get a result that you like. And then shadows contrast, my absolute favorite. I always love adding contrast in the shadows, so I'm going to increase that uh, quite a bit. And then I'm just going to bring the balance to balance those out a little bit more. Uh, you've got some other effects here. You can do dodging and burning. We'll leave that for another video. You can also do split toning, which is uh, really popular. Um, Instagram effects are mostly just like split tone effects. So if that's something you're interested in, you can do that. Um, the other one that I do actually use is the color enhancer where you can increase the brilliance of the colors or you can pull it back a little bit if you feel like it's a little strong. In my case, I actually feel like it's a little strong, so I'm going to pull the brilliance back. But I am going to add color contrast. So I'm just going to add ever so slightly a little bit of contrast to the color and I'm going to adjust the hue so that I can target uh, a little bit better the uh, colors that I want to uh, primarily affect from a color contrast. Uh, so that is it for this particular edit. Uh, you can see I just used a couple filters that they have here to quickly take it from, let's see, there's the before uh, on the left. And you can see very quick and easy, but a big difference in the final image. Uh, there's some other great features that this software has that I didn't touch on in this video. But in future videos, I'm going to make sure to come back and we're going to explore some of these uh, individual filters more in depth. Um, so take a look at those. If you have any comments or questions about this video, be sure to leave those in the reply section. And we're also going to leave a link to uh, the Skyland website where you can get a free trial for this software. So you can try this software out completely free or you can buy it for $89. So go ahead and hit that link if you don't have the software yet so you can follow along. And I hope this helps you out and look forward to seeing you on the next video.